Now, in the last video, we talked about ionic bonding. Now, let's move on to covalent bonding. And covalent bonding is also known as molecular bonding. And covalent bonding involves only non-metals. Unlike ionic bonding, we said that it involves a metal and a non-metal. Covalent is only between non-metals. Now, covalent bonding is based on the idea of sharing electrons. Now, how is that? Well, let's see. For example, let's take chlorine. Okay, now, chlorine has seven electrons in its outermost shell. So, let's do these. One, two, three, four five six seven now we have another cl wants to bond with it let's see one two three four five six seven now what happens is we said that chlorine wants to at wants to attain the nearest noble gas configuration now that means it wants to gain an extra electron to become like argon now what happens is both of these CLs will share their electrons. Now what happens is this as follows. Now let's do this in the same color. So there is the CL here and its electron and the other CL will give its electron to become like this and this is how molecular bonding forms now this cl has its eight electrons and this cl also has its eight electrons so they share electrons through a bond so this becomes like this so it becomes chlorine gas now let's see so we said that ionic sorry covalent bonding involves only non-metals so these are the elements that form covalent bonding now it's impossible to find covalent bonding between the first group and the second group because they are metals now let's take some examples well some of the covalent compounds include oxygen gas and that would be the bond between two oxygens. Now also carbon dioxide gas. There is a C here and there is two oxygens. Also methane, which has four hydrogens, covalently bonded to it. So these are some of the examples of covalent bonding to yield molecular bonding so it's also known as molecular bonding and they are non-metals all of them okay so let's compare between Covalent bonding and ionic bonding. Let's make a table. So, covalent and ionic. Now, the first thing we're going to compare is that covalent bonding involves sharing electrons, as we said. And ionic bonding involves the loss and gain of electrons to form ions and these ions are oppositely charged that's why they attract each other and they form the bond now one thing to compare is that conductivity so let's talk about conductivity well covalent bonding since they since covalent bonding involves non-metals, that means they don't conduct electricity. Now, unlike ionic bonding, 
ionic ionic compounds tend to conduct so it conducts electricity but notice this only only in the molten state now let's compare something else let's compare volatility and volatility is the ease with which the compound vaporizes so volatility covalent bonding the compounds that form covalent bonding have a high volatility while compounds that tend to form ionic bonds have a low volatility now finally let's compare solubility so let's compare compare solubility now molecular compounds are relatively insoluble in water unlike ionic for example NaCl and NaCl is stable salt and table salt dissolves easily in water that's why it's soluble it's ionic it's an ionic compound and it's soluble now that's that for this video so let's recap in this video we talked about covalent bonding and we said covalent bonding is based on the idea of sharing electrons and we demonstrated that using chlorine gas right here and then we moved on to some of the examples of covalent bonding we talked about oxygen carbon dioxide and methane gas now finally we compared some of the some of the characteristics of compounds that form covalent bonding and ionic bonding and that's that for this video in the next video we're going to talk about more examples of covalent bonding so stay tuned and good luck